Hello, everybody. This is me, Jennifer McCray, J. Shrink. And today we're going to talk about, uh, you know, lately all the myths has been about the celebrity myths, Cardi B this, such and such this, and the gossip about the white lady who said she invented the the uh, satin scarves that black women have worn for years, you know, on their hair. She just really, uh, I think she called herself approving up on it. It looks tacky and it has a big old bowl. And she's looking at these scarves for like $98. Y'all could, um, I don't know, I may put something on the, um, on, on, on the link below, I may not just look up um, uh, sad scarves, white woman, or something like that, or go to Lovely Tea. They, one of them will tell you. So they've been talking about that, and also they've been they've been ooing on and going over all kind of myths about uh, they're, they're, they're distracting us now with the Mueller trial. Nobody wants to hear that. It's not, I mean, I'm I, like, I'm among a group of people in my group, and they, they've got, they, they've got, it's, it's, it's on, you know, the state, the TV stations, and Mueller's not, they're giving all these people this time, this, this amount of time for Mueller to ask questions, to ask Mueller questions. But Mueller, they don't give him time to answer the questions. So it's just a bunch of people and him going, well, uh, I, uh, uh, and it, it's distracting between that, the head Reverend Cardi B, and all that silliness. Now, what, what they have been hiding from you is something that I'm going to talk to you about. Um, I, I'm not sure, I, I'm sure most of you have heard of the term uh, service dogs, right? Okay, it falls under a category called... Um, I can't write it on the board for you. <laughs> um, if you got a, oh, you see that? Well, we got a board here, but we we don't have uh, <laughs> chalk, <laughs> which is odd. <laughs> but anyway, so it's under what's called assistance dogs. I mean, assistance animals. Okay. So you have under assistance animals, you have uh, two types of dogs, I mean two types of animals. You have uh, <coughs> service dogs, which the ADA uh, and FHA and all of them describe as a dog where you have a medical condition and the dog uh, it says trained to perform tasks to help you to do your whatever your functional limitation you have, you know, in your body or in your everyday living. So the dog has a specifically, like for instance, um, say you're having a seizure, right? And uh, you're feeling it coming on, but it's not coming on. And you fall down. So your, the dog will fall down on top of you it's trained to fall on top of you, keep people away from you uh, until you have that seizure. Or they have what's, what's, what these are called medical alert dogs. And um, the other one um, could be like a diabetic dog. Like people feel their blood sugar, they're not they're feeling no, you know, dizzy and sleepy. So they help you check your blood sugar. They can smell the... Uh, the ingredients in your body that makes up sh sugar, the glucogen and all that, and um, they can tell when you need to go get your blood sugar taken. This is with people who have unstable uh, diabetes. Their blood sugar is unstable, and there are a lot of people like this. Okay, so also um, we have what's called uh, emotional support dogs, okay? Um, emotional support dogs are basically for people who have uh, some type of mental illness, uh, psychiatric disorder. Oh, I forgot to say, um, 
your dog, it has to be specific, the service dog, and what the dog performs. It has to be specific tasks related to your disability. And I just told you the two examples. It has to be done, uh, I'll tell you what's the difference in how you go about getting one and what's the things about that uh, a little bit later. But let me tell you what emotional support dog is first. Okay. Emotional support dog is basically a dog that um, it, it, it's there for people who have mental illnesses, anxiety. It's, don't, don't confuse that with the PTSD dog because that's a service dog because they're trained, you know, by the, uh, um, the, the vet organizations to, you know, get those dogs to the, uh, the veteran who was injured in the, in, you know, in the war or whatever, in conflict, whatever we're in now. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, but emotional support dogs are basically for, they don't need a lot of notations, uh, registering or anything like that. Um, they're dogs that if you have a mental illness, uh, or you have bad nerves, <laughs> or you are anxious all the time, uh, they're the dog, or you're depressed, you're the dog, they're the dogs that try to make you feel better. They're there to make you feel better. They make you to, uh, like, uh, you, you isolate yourself in the house. You have to take the dog out, take it for a walk, let it do its business. You have to do, uh, the dog was just basically, uh, let me show you. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me get my little, my little things together and I'll show you exactly what they do. Okay. Here's an example of a, I'm sorry, <laughs> of a, emotional support dog. Okay, can y'all see this? This is my little dog, Chrissy. Okay, Chrissy Marie. Uh, she's a companion. They're still not considered pets. They're considered as, uh, assistance dogs. And um, she keeps me going all the time because I do have a psychiatric disability. Okay. So she hugs you, kiss you. You hug her, kiss her. Let me see, y'all. I'm, I'm getting messed up with this turn. Camera. Okay. So, um, so this is Chrissy Marie. They love on you. They get you out the house. They make you feel better. Okay? So they're your friend if you like most, a lot of people mentally ill don't have friends. People don't like to be around mentally ill people. So they get a service animal like Chrissy Marie here. She's a little chihuahua. Now your service animal, animal can be uh, any kind of animal. You can have a service cat. Because I've had people ask me to help them write to help them to assist their doctors in writing letters for their cats to be served as cats. So I've done that too. And um, I wanted to say that, and um, I teach courses in, yeah, like this one, um, everything you wanted to know about, you know, assistance animals. So I tell you in more detail about, you know, how to get your dog, how to uh, travel with your dog, how to live, be able to live in a, 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 a housing facility that says no pets, or we charge $300 for pets, and um, how pets fly on airplanes, which is the subject that we're moving to now, okay? Uh, uh, so I'm just describing to you about assistance pets, and. Since most doctors and don't know how to write them in, in certain uh, licensed mental health therapists don't know how to write them, I teach awareness courses uh, uh, and I consult them to teach them how to write service dog letters, service and I mean, I'm sorry, assistance, <laughs> uh, assistance animal letters. And that can include your emotional support dog or your service dog, okay? Because like you said, service dogs are like medical support dogs. And they are defined under the uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act, 
a Title III. Um, also, um, the uh, Fair Housing Act, okay? Now, in terms of emotional dogs, only the, uh, the Fair Housing Act, um, the Fair Housing Act covers them. The ADA don't cover them, it only co covers service dogs, okay? So Fair Housing Act covers both service dogs and emotional support dogs. So if you have emotional support dog and you take it with you, uh, they cannot charge you $300 or say, uh, you, we, don't, we don't have pets here. They can't do that unless they have a dwelling of uh, four apartments or under, you know, their units like that. Okay, so basically what we're going to talk about, and it's, it's been getting, you know, it, it, it hasn't been getting the press it's needed to be getting pressed. I'm just going to show you an example right here. You see that? Emotional support dog bites flight attendants. Yes, recently there have been cases which the news media you know, I tell you, they give you distraction, like the muter trial and uh, all these celebrities and all this crap, but they don't tell you about these things that's happening uh, frequently that may affect you, especially if you are, uh, you, 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 you're living and you want your dog to live with you. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, um, the uh, um, air... <laughs> Sorry. Air Carrier uh, Access Act also protects uh, uh, service dogs with two flies in, you know, in, in uh, on airplanes. Because a lot of people have a phobia about airplanes, so they let some emotional support dogs um, ride on the airplanes, okay, with their owners. And this, oh, and I'm gonna, and, and that's what I'm gonna. That's the main subject of this letter, okay. I mean, of this. <laughs> I got so much to say, I just turn on time. Of this topic, okay. So basically lately, uh, people have been bringing their emotional support dogs on airplanes like American Airlines and Delta, and the dogs have been biting people. The dogs have been poorly trained or not trained at all, uh, so they end up um, biting people, causing the liability for the airlines. Okay, so I'm, that's what I was going to discuss and, and tell you about um, what happened. Okay, I've read a case, there was one case where uh, this dog, I, it was a big dog, some type of pit bull mix, the, the man didn't have it strapped in, uh, in the, he was at the window, you know, and he didn't have it strapped in um, the, um, the hint, they call him the owner, it's called a handler. Okay, the handler owner didn't have the dog secured. So I don't know, something startled the dog and the dog bit, I mean, it, 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 it mauled the face of the other passenger that was sitting beside him and the dog. Okay, so they had to take the dog and the man off the, um, make an emergency stop and take the man off. But they didn't give me any details on that one. They just said that. And so he's getting surgery for that. Okay, and the next one concerns the, um, excuse me, y'all, I'm sorry. <laughs> the next one concerns an emotional support dog that bites the American Airlines flight attendant. Um, basically what happened here was that the flight attendant, the man, the, the owner, handler, he was asleep, okay? So he was near the window, again, asleep. And uh, she was trying to get something, you know, she was collecting, I don't know, they didn't say what she was collecting, maybe drinks and stuff like that, and peanut, empty peanut, you know, cartons, containers, or whatever. But she was doing that, and when she reached over, the dog bit her on the hand, okay? So it bit the flight attendant on the hand. And the flight attendant had to get five stitches, okay? So um, 
There's been a great deal of interest in emotional support dogs. And one of the reasons is it's easy to fake getting a support dog. It's a very fraudulent business that's just mushrooming. Um, and it's sad, you know, because the airlines, they want the people who, are, who have a phobia about flying to want to fly their animals, but they don't want the people to the, the dogs to be, to be so untrained or poorly trained or not trained at all to just maul them. See, this doesn't happen with service dogs. I've trained two of my service dogs. They could go anywhere with me. They could go to stores, libraries, anywhere. They, they do not focus on anybody but you, you know. So, and what, 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 what it's supposed to do for you. But, but, but emotional support animals, they are not trained to do that. They're trained to make you feel better. You know, like, for instance, say if my little dog, uh, Chrissy Marie, I want to take her to see my cousin in, say, New York. Okay, Chrissy Marie is there when she knows that I'm, you know, anxious, shaking, or whatever. She's there to lick me. She's there to comfort me. She's there for me to cuddle uh, during that time, okay? I don't know how they had the pit bull do They said he was supposed to be in a crate. But anyway, but the little dogs, you know, you can hold them and stuff like that. Um, so the, uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, the union, the American Association of Flight Attendants, they want some stricter rules like they have for service dogs for emotional support dogs so that they won't get injured too because that's not the only flight attendant that's been bitten. And, though, and that passenger is not, a little girl, little girl have, has been, was bitten. The passengers and a flight attendants have been bitten by fake, fraudulent, emotional support animals. And I'm gonna tell you the difference, okay? So uh, the um, Association of Fire Attendants, they basically want the Department of Transportation, which they call DOT, to provide stricter guidelines and regulations for service dogs. Like, I mean, I'm sorry, for emotional support dogs, emotional support dogs, like they do service dogs. I'm going too fast, I know. <laughs> um, so, um, get this. Um, So that's been what's going on lately. These, it, 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 it's getting to a point now where uh, people are leery about anybody with any kind of dog, even if it's a service dog. If you don't look like you need one, they'll think it's fake, you know. And a lot of these things are fake. Oh, that flight was going from Dallas, Texas to uh, North Carolina. So they said, oh, she was reaching into a, a, a seat back pocket to retrieve a sickness bag. Oh, okay. They said the, uh, the passenger got ill on the plane, and she was just trying to get the, uh, you know, the airbag to get him up. So the dog probably thought she was threatening the man. And, they, and that's what you teach about, that's what you do when you have service dogs. You, you teach them how not to just get startled or lunge at stuff. They're just supposed to relax, watch you, monitor you, and just not get, get startled and just think that the, the dog was thinking that the, per, that the flight attendant was attacking the dog. In, those, in all those cases that I was telling you about, so they're untrained. And, um, but uh, my little, my, my little sh uh, Chihuahua Chrissy, she basically can be a service dog. She, she has only one thing that, uh, one, cra one, one area that she's deficient in that I would have to get to make her a service dog instead of an emotional support dog. She jumps up on people. She's overly sociable. Now, if I decide I want her to stop jumping up on people every time she sees somebody, uh, she can does she does everything that a psychiatric service dog does, but she does her her temperament. She's just sweet. She just likes people. So I would have to teach her how to 
attend to me and not these people that she see and they keep going and, uh, you know, attitudinal, making her leash shorter, uh, directing and guiding her and things like that. But I'm keeping her as a emotional support dog now. Now, later on, I may make her a service dog. So I'm not sure because, like I said, I've trained two dogs. One was a, a, another chihuahua named Pepe, and the other one was a uh, dash hound named Heidi Klum. And I had to put her down because she could no longer do her biz, her her, her uh, functions, carry out her functions uh, and tasks due to the fact that uh, she was uh, paralyzed. Okay. So... Uh, so you can't have accommodations for reasonable accommodations for a a a a disabled dog, <laughs> okay? So this all falls under what the Americans with Disability Act, the Air Carriers Act, the Fair Housing Act, reasonable accommodations, okay? That's what you ask for when you want to bring your dog uh, on the plane or or uh, to your house or, or your house, okay? But the only places uh, that I read that don't allow emotional support dogs or um, what you call it, a greyhound buses and buses and stuff like that, they because they can have them, you know, rummaging around the bus and all that. They only accept service dogs, okay? Service dogs, not emotional support dogs. And I've seen people at the greyhound station with their service dogs and they were very well trained and you know they didn't act out okay so I'm going to show you some things um that you may need to know so what we're going to talk about here is the what they call the cottage industry out there where people who just want to take their dogs with them. They don't have anything wrong with them. They write these, these places on the internet saying that they write letters for your emotional support dog. And uh, they're, most of them are scams, they're fakes. And um, I'm just gonna show you some examples. This is one example. You see what you see what they say. Normally, what they do is they'll get they'll say, uh, "We need a dog to travel with you or live with you. Um, no doctor needed. Our special licensed uh, mental health professionals will uh, write you out a uh, detailed documentation service letter that." It, that, that certifies you as uh, your dog as a uh, su uh, emotional support dog. Okay, even when you the the the, the, um, the person who okay also well okay the the fraud here is that you just give them that ninety eight dollars and they'll talk to you on the phone or you know on the cell phone about uh, why you need a support dog, you can lie. I mean, you, you can just say, this, I'm, I'm just scared of flying. And that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's, that's not specific enough. But when, they say, when you say that, I'm just scared of flying, and you don't say, well, I have um, agoraphobia. Or, you know, I, I have fear of heights. I have fear of flying. You know, I'm, I'm scared to fly. That's what I need my dog to help me with. That's not a mental illness. That's just you saying what you have, okay? So these places will say, well, we'll just do this. What we'll do is we have licensed um, mental health professionals now who are specialized to write the letters for you, and they'll put it in their language. They won't say that you have fear of flying. They're not going to say that because that's not professional. They're going to say you have a phobia about flying or you have anxieties about flying. Okay, so they're going to reword it.